trouble began one summer term when Sidney Penns got into a panic over his exams. I feel sick. What am I going to do? Questions came pouring into the head monitor's office from the mind computer. Can I get a doctor's certificate to get me off my exams? Hello, medical centre. Any chance of a sick note? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, lack of revision is not a registered illness. Oh, any chance of a headache before the English exam? No, but you'll certainly have one afterwards. Eh? <laughs> Can I learn a whole maths textbook in three days? Do four French exercises, write six computer programmes, memorise all the kings and queens of England, and still have time to watch Match of the Day. What can I do? Who can help me? Shall I get a forged passport and leave the country? What about prayer? Oh, no. Last time it was the Bible. That was bad enough, but not, 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 not prayer. Not that impossible, vague, mysterious, mind-blowingly complicated subject. If I pray, will God help me pass my exams? How do I know that God's there? How can I be sure that he'll listen to me? Isn't prayer just talking to yourself? What about the time I prayed for my auntie and she recovered? And then I lost my pet snail and prayed to find him. But he died horribly. Why does God seem so far away? And why pray anyway if he knows everything? Oh, why is prayer so complicated? That's right. Far too complicated to think about now. There's no time to pray. And there's no time to do any revision either. Oh, well, in that case, you'll just have to... Uh, pray. D no. Dear God, please help me pass my exams. Oh, wait a minute. Do you have to keep your eyes shut? Dear God, hang on, do you have to kneel down or go into a church? Well, I don't know, do I? I'll have to go down and see what pathetic little scraps of information on such a totally irrelevant subject I can find. Good evening. Here is the six o'clock conscience. I might have known you'd have your little say. Men, women and children have prayed to God since the dawn of human history. Millions of people are praying to God at this very moment. Prayer is as relevant to human beings as breathing. That is the end of the six o'clock conscience. Thank you. So, it's relevant to millions of people, fine. But not to Sidney Penge. Oh, no. See? <laughs> no entry on prayer. Nothing. Irrelevant. Ye oh, hang on. There are some pages torn from here. It's on. Yeah. Wonder if they're in this file. Strictly classified information, official memo on prayer. Hmm. One of the most powerful weapons of all time. The practice of prayer by any individual can lead to total internal revolution. Our security depends on ignoring this subject at all costs. Sign the Chief Minister for Propaganda, Ministry of the Interior of Sydney Penge. And here are the torn out records. Pages on prayer in the life of Sidney Penge. Ah, censored. What am I to do? <gasps> the questions are coming down the stairs. Why don't I feel any different when I pray? How do I stop my mind wandering? Does prayer really work? What is prayer? There's nothing for it. I'll have to disobey government orders and break the seal. Here goes. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Monitor. Yeah. You've been under our surveillance for some time. Oh, who are you? The Chief Minister of the Interior of Sydney Penge, with special responsibility for the welfare of his brain. Oh, I see. Uh, we've been a little concerned about you in our department ever since that careless little episode with the um, Bible. Oh, yes, Minister, I can explain. Yeah, no, don't bother. I merely wish to state that your current investigation into prayer comes into the category of restricted activities. I'm sorry. The feeling is mutual. Now, uh, you wouldn't want us all to lose our jobs in Sydney Penge, would you? Uh, no, Minister. Good. I knew you'd be reasonable. That is why we encourage a little disinformation on the subject of prayer. Disinformation? Uh, yeah, it's a technical term for giving the wrong answers to the right questions. Ah. Yeah, Sydney asks the question about prayer, such as, uh, what is prayer for? And we give the wrong answer. Uh, prayer is for getting whatever you want from God. Do you follow me? I think so, Minister. So, uh, when Sidney Penge prays and then doesn't get whatever he wants, he soon abandons prayer. Uh, like the time he prayed for a bicycle for his birthday and got a woolly jumper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't pray for two years. No. <laughs> hmm. Now, you will see from this chart that there are various types of prayer. 
some of these have already occurred in the life of Sydney. Others, if we all do our jobs, Mr. Headmonitor, will never occur. Oh, yes, Minister. Yes, I completely understand. I sincerely hope you do. Uh, type one, God bless Mummy and Daddy, Granny, Grandpa, Rabbit, Teddy prayers. Uh, these can form a dangerous habit of praying every day, which could lead to serious advances in prayer. Yes. But in Sidney's case, he stopped talking to God at about the same time he stopped talking to Rabbit and Teddy, so there was no problem. <laughs> However, there have been certain exceptions in his life. Take the cry for help prayer, type two. Mm -hmm. Sidney's first taste of this was when he prayed for the rain to stop during the first match of the season. The sun came out and Sidney believed in prayer for a short while. Since then, he's prayed about more serious things, but only when in desperate need. Yes, I see. Type 3, official prayers. These are the prayers said in Sunday school, school assembly and church. Usually there's no danger in these because they're too long and too boring for Sidney to pay attention. It's quiet. Uh, he's heard many official prayers without even realising that prayer is a revolutionary force. Huh? Type 4, praying for others. These are very important and dangerous kinds of prayer to be avoided in the life of Sydney at all costs. Yes, of course, Minister, yes. Type 5, thank you prayers. Uh, thank you prayers are extremely powerful because they could open Sydney's life to a relationship with God. I see. However, Sydney never says thank you to God in prayer, only give me this. Yeah. And uh, that brings me on to the final, most deadly form of prayer. Type 6, prayer as a way of life. This is a secret weapon that few human beings ever experience and must never be brought to the attention of Sidney Penn. Uh, yes. Excuse me, Minister, but uh, why is it so lethal? Why? Why? Because this kind of prayer is not selfish and narrow, it is open. Oh. Its chief aim is to speak to God about everything as often as possible, and to trust him all the time when life is good and bad, to listen to God even more than to speak to him. In fact, to let God be in charge. You mean? Yes, Ed Monacy, yes. Revolution in the life of Sidney Penge. Oh. That's why prayer, of all things, is under an embargo, forbidden, censored, strictly no go. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right, sir. Phew. Only Sidney knew what trouble he'd got me into with the very mention of prayer. Oh, I'll have to get the eye department to distract him from the question of exams. Hello, eye department. Can you arrange a major distraction? Oh, gosh. It's Tracy Wigglebottom. She's walking towards me. I I'm going red. I can feel it. Oh, crumbs. She's gorgeous. I think I'm going to faint. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Tracy. <coughs> Hi, Tracy. Uh, hello, mouth department. Get Sidney to say something, and quick, he needs more moisture. Get the epiglottis going. Turn on the saliva ducts. Um, how are you today, Tracy? Fine, thank you. You look worried, Sidney. Yeah, I'm worried about my exams. Oh, dear. Mouth department, keep talking. I say, Tracy. Yeah? Do you mind me asking you something personal? <laughs> that depends what it is, Sidney. Um, well, um... Do you believe in prayer? Yeah, oh, no. You blithering idiots, couldn't you think of something better? Like asking her for a date. Prayer. Oh, oh. Prayer? Yeah, yeah, I do. She does? The dolly bird of the fourth year prays? Oh, no. I mean, do you pray to God and believe, you know, that he's there, listening? Yeah, I believe that. It's really why I pray. Every day? I try to. Cool. Look at him, the starstruck fool. He's listening to all this nonsense about prayer just because it's a pretty girl talking. I'll have to feed him one of these pieces of uh, disinformation. <clears throat> um, prayer is uh, just for old ladies. No, it isn't. Look at Tracy. Hmm? All right, then. We'll try this one. Prayer is just for the weak and feeble. But Tracy doesn't need to pray. She's got everything. The looks, the brains, popularity. Now, if she looked like pasty Brumthorpe, she'd need to pray. But Tracy, she must think that prayer's worthwhile for other reasons. 
I think I will pray about my exams. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> operator, get me the Minister of the Interior and hurry. Yes. Oh, Minister, this is a prayer alert. Sidney Pinch is about to pray. Yes, yes, Minister, I'll be right there. Now, look here, Head Monitor, this is your last aware of his existence, least of all Sydney. Follow me. Oh, where are we going, Minister? We're going to the heart of the problem, Head Monitor. Uh, take note, on my left is the mechanical function of Sidney Penge's heart, but behind it, the camouflaged, is the secret heart of Sidney Penge. Oh. Order, no admittance. Sidney Penge Official Secrets Act. As you can see, no one has been in Sidney Penge. In here are thoughts and emotions of great intimacy, hidden desires, shadowy depths of lust and festering mounds of greed. Not to mention the treasures of kindness and compassion, thus infinite possibilities of city guards this secret heart. What was that? That was the monster. Oh my. Yes, the dreaded Mimi monster. Oh. And, and, and nothing can come in and out without the Mimi monster's permission. Exactly. And prayer can only work effectively when the heart is open. <laughs> oh, me! Oh, me! <laughs> Food, love, warmth, success, oh, for me! <laughs> What's this? A request for prayer? For me? Yes, good. <laughs> Help for me to do my exams. Yes. <laughs> that will pass. Everything. <laughs> trouble, even though I haven't done any work or written an all. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I, I fail, I'll look really stupid. So, so please give me what I want. Or else don't, don't expect, expect me to pray, pray again, again for a long, long time. time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brilliant, isn't it? Even a good idea of praying gets utterly twisted by the Mimi monster. It is sensational, Minister. Nothing is allowed in or out of the heart of Sidney Penge. Yeah. So even the rare occasions when he does pray can be neutralised. Right. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Minister, but uh, what if he um, really prayed? <laughs> you fool. If you value your job, never mention the possibility of real prayer again. Uh, no, Minister. Sidney Penger's exams came and went, and one day... Hi, Sidney. Oh, hi, Tracy. How did your exams go? Oh, I failed them all. Oh, dear. So much for prayer. Well, I prayed that I'd pass them, and I didn't, so I'm never going to pray again. Aha. Uh -huh. Never going to pray again, thank goodness. That little phase is over. But, Sydney, did you do any work for your exam? What's that got to do with it? <laughs> well, quite a lot. Prayer isn't just a guaranteed answer to everything. Isn't it? Well, no. It's more like opening your heart to God. What, what, what was that? What's that? A rumble? An earthquake? Hello, head monitor. Uh, what on earth is going on? Did I hear something about opening hearts? <laughs> yes, minister. I'm sorry. I... It means, like, when you pray, you come to God as you are, with all your faults and problems, and you open up your heart and let him in. Is that what it says in the Bible? Yeah. Here, look. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I to him and eat with him and he with me. You see, it's not a one-way command system. It's more like a two-way friendship. And if you don't get the answer you want, it means trusting God that he knows best. Let me...